What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and today we are with the $1300 Wonder. This is the Chromebook Pixel, Google's emphatic answer to a question I'm not sure who asked. This guy does bring a lot to the table as far as cloud computing, modern design, and a lot of pretty killer specs. Let's go ahead and take a first look at the Chromebook Pixel and see if it should be your next laptop. Alright, so we are here with the Chromebook Pixel, a fine example of Google's really impressive industrial design. But those good looks actually go beneath the skin. This guy's got some pretty nice specs as well. Uh, so let me get this out of the way first, because it's really going to be the giant elephant in the room. It's got a $1,300 price tag to go with it. That's not the LTE version. It's actually $1,299. If you want the LTE version, you're gonna have to pony up an extra 200 bucks to jump to $1,500. So not cheap at all. This laptop is not geared to the average consumer. Google's smart enough to know they're not gonna sell these guys in bulk. This is a, essentially a readily available developer's unit uh, that they might wanna get in hands for folks that wanna start coding for Chrome OS the operating system that's running. Uh, there are Chrome boxes, there are other Chrome books, and other sort of Chrome products Google's hoping to get onto the market. And this is sort of the flagship product for that. Google's under no disillusions that they're gonna sell a billion of these and it's gonna be a mass market item. Just wanted to get that sucker out of the way. Uh, so from a spec standpoint, it's got a Core i5 processor clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, it's got Intel's relatively capable uh, HD graphics. That's the 4000 that is integrated. From a port standpoint, point it's got them it's not overwhelming uh, with high power it's got two USB 2.0 ports mini display port an SD MMC card reader unlike previous Chrome OS uh, laptops or desktops that we've seen. This one actually has a pretty decent amount of onboard storage. It's got 32 gigs of SSD, which is going to result in obviously very fast file access, but also incredibly quick boot up times. Certainly you'd expect that from an SSD, uh, but Chrome OS is really meant for those quick boot ups and it works really well. Uh, this is one of the fastest boot ups I've ever seen uh, on a laptop. So the big deal here, it's named the Pixel. It's all about this guy, the screen. Uh, this is probably the best screen I have ever seen on a laptop. It's a 12.85 inch affair with 4.3 million pixels. It's got a resolution of 2560 by 1700. Uh, it actually means it has the highest pixel density of any laptop ever with 239. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's got a 178 inch wide view angle as well, so you can view it from really any spot. Uh, augmented with four gigs of RAM, uh, as I mentioned, 32 gigs on the SSD. If you opt for the LTE version, you're gonna get an extra uh, couple gigs and go to 64. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the screen. It is beautiful, it's also incredibly glossy. I can pretty much wave at the camera and you could see it here. Uh, in direct sunlight, this is going to be borderline unusable. Uh, so keep that in mind depending on how you want to use it. Uh, like most laptops coming out now, this is a touch screen. Uh, and it works very well. It supports multi-touch uh, and pretty smooth scrolling. So let me go ahead and give you an example. Go ahead and launch Techno Buffalo here and you can scroll with your finger if you want and you can get the same desktop experience uh, that you get anywhere else. You can scroll down. Uh, Multi-touch is here. Uh, we have not been able to get pinch to zoom really working on any website where it would work uh, ordinarily if you were on a tablet. So something to bear in mind here. I'm not going to talk that much about Chrome OS. We've talked about it at length, uh, but little bits will filter into this review. Uh, video looks absolutely tremendous on here. I'll show you an example of some of the most common videos you'll probably watch, YouTube. Uh, and also, if you can hear, if it's going to translate, the speakers on this guy are, are pretty outstanding for a laptop this small and this thin. So let me go ahead and show you what it's going to sound like. So, like that goat would say, yeah, it sounds pretty good here. Um, it's very surprising. Uh, what is also surprising is the battery life. Uh, it's got five hours of battery life. You'd expect much, much, much more from essentially a web-only op operating system. Uh, Chrome OS is essentially a Chrome browser with apps. Uh, there's a decent amount of app support, but not a giant uh, amount there. All the stuff that you'd want to do ordinarily on a laptop, you're going to have a hard time finding an equivalent here. Um, you have to go ahead and browse a Chrome store, and even then, not all the apps are going to function properly. Uh, Google's hoping, though, you can overlook that. They're going to give you a free terabyte of Google Drive storage, so, you know, that's kind of awesome uh, if you want to store all your files in the cloud. Uh, you've got sort of a taskbar, a launch bar down here, uh, which is now totally touchscreen. Uh, you can have 
go ahead and launch that up. And you can actually view files and you have a native file explorer, which is a really nice addition to the newest version here um, of Chrome OS. You can go ahead and view your file just like you would. So if you want to minimize something, all you have to do is just tap the icon down below, either with your finger uh, or the trackpad. And speaking of the trackpad, it is really good. Uh, it's a very large, wide trackpad. Not sure what it's made out of, but it's got sort of a glossy feel to it. Uh, and it works extremely well for multi-touch scrolling. Uh, as you scroll up and down, it is extremely smooth. So Google's done a very nice job incorporating multi-touch into the trackpad. All right, so the keyboard here is absolutely outstanding. It's a chiclet style that was really made popular by Apple's keyboards, but other manufacturers have been using it uh, for years as well. But there are some oddities here. Uh, gone is the caps locks, and you got a Chrome-specific search button here. Uh, we don't have a function row dedicated, but you do have a ton of function keys. Uh, so you don't have the typical F1, F2, but you do have some shortcuts uh, that line the top of this keyboard, and typing experience is really outstanding. Uh, and worked very well. Uh, you've got a 720p front-facing camera here, obviously, for web chat or whatever you might want to do. If you want to do a Google Hangout, I'm sure Google's hoping uh, you will utilize. Uh, pictures here are also um, quite obviously very good looking. So let me go ahead and give you an example. Uh, we'll use the wallpapers here. They're full HD wallpapers. So you do have what's equivalent of a right click. Uh, you can go ahead and take two fingers, tap down, and you can go ahead and set wallpaper. This will give us sort of a nice sense of how images look. And they do look absolutely gorgeous on the screen, assuming you're getting a nice high res uh, image. Go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, things just look absolutely beautiful. Here, we'll keep that one. It looks like a cool, serene uh, twilight. Uh, so everything else here is kind of as you'd expect. Uh, build quality is absolutely tremendous here. Uh, it's probably one of the best feeling, best looking laptops I've ever seen. I love the glowing light on the back. It serves no purpose as of yet, other than just looking really cool and it's something certainly unique to this laptop. So the chrome badging here is really subtle and I like that. You've got one right above the keyboard and one on the back on the piano hinge. Um, one nice thing about the hinge as well, certainly when you deal with touch screens, it's a pretty tight hinge. Um, so as you're touching this, it's not gonna move back too much. It's obviously a little bit of give, uh, but certainly better than what I've seen on some other uh, laptops and sort of Windows 8 Ultrabooks uh, that also utilize touchscreen or Windows 8 laptops in general. So the big thing here obviously is price. We talked about that when we first started. At $1,300, this is clearly not geared toward the mass market. You can get much better value elsewhere. You've got the Microsoft Surface tablets, a slew of Windows 8 Ultrabooks, uh, Windows 8 tablets and Windows 8 laptops and desktops. Uh, you're pretty much at MacBook price here as well for a few hundred dollar difference. This is not a computer you get if you want mass productivity. Obviously, you want to play games, do any sort of video editing. Uh, who is this good for? Really just developers. Uh, if you want to develop for Chrome OS, obviously this is going to be the flagship product to learn how to do it with. Uh, if you're considering picking one of these up and you're not a developer, you're going to get a great web-only experience. Uh, you're going to be able to you know, browse the web using Chrome, play videos doing Chrome, uh, but that's really it. You're probably better suited uh, to pick up a tablet, whether you want you know, a Nexus device, if you want to stay with Google, uh, or look towards an iPad. Uh, but this is for media consumption. This is not media creation at all. But with that in mind, Google's done a really nice job. They're not masquerading this as anything other than what it is. They're not saying it's a laptop for everybody. They're not saying it's a laptop for gamers or heavy video editors. It doesn't pretend to be anything else, and it's unpretentious in doing it. Uh, it's got a tremendous screen. It's got a great web browser. It's got one of the best keyboard and touchpad experiences I've seen, but this is not a product that I would ever consider using on a regular basis. And you shouldn't either, unless you want to start coding and creating your own apps for Google Chrome. There are way less expensive options if you want to try Chrome OS. Very cheap Chromebooks, uh, very cheap Chrome boxes, and soon we'll probably see Chrome on televisions as well. This is not the one to get if you want any sort of productivity, but if you want to code and you want a gorgeous screen, you're going to enjoy the Chromebook. Just don't go in thinking you're going to play some games.